Devin Fan here. Welcome back to Eat Immortals Wing Chun. Um, today we're going to be talking about and learning what I think is uh, actually one of the most undeveloped, underdeveloped aspects of Wing Chun, uh, which is uh, mobility, basic mobility and footwork. So, and we're only going to be talking, and the reason I say basic, we're only going to be talking basically about learning the one step, the Bu Ma. Uh, in, in Wing Chun, the darting step. That's what we're going to introduce in today. Not so much Shun Ma, that, that'll be for a, a later video where we're going to talk kind of the advanced techniques of the movement. This just to understand, when basics talking about taking a, everything you learn when we're talking about learning your stance, is how to take your stance, now put your stance into motion. All right? So, why is mobility so important in Wing Chun? I'm going to take you back so you understand what not to do, okay? So, many times what I see myself, and I, I don't see it as a, it's not coming from a place of criticism, it's coming from a place of concern just because I, you know, I love Wing Chun so much, I love Kung Fu so much. Sometimes you see, I'll say not sometimes, many times, and I'm sure you've done your own research, you see uh, Wing Chun fighters who are only used to fighting or, or, or practicing sparring, let's say, with other, other Wing Chun fighters. Then they come to, to practice, spar, or sometimes even kind of challenge in a fight other fighters from another martial art. Then what you end up seeing is something where the, the concept of movement comes from a place of, it's very static, okay? So I guess that because they've learned their stance here, they've learned their basic stance, then when they decide to move forward and then they're waiting for this person to attack them, okay? You t almost like turns into like a, like a rusty robot. So when they move, they kind of take this one step at a time, it becomes this very static structure. Everyone understands, okay, you're nervous because it's a fighting structure. I haven't been there myself. But it gets very, very tense and the, the movement becomes very small, just almost forward directional, one inch at a time, applying the, the step. All right. Where this happens is, I think sometimes, first of all, number one, I think people see in the movies. In the movies, they try to make someone look cool. They're standing here waiting because it's it's more dramatic. Real life, okay, real fighting scenario. The last thing you want to be doing is make yourself this stationary target where you're just sitting here waiting to be annihilated by someone. That's that's what will happen. Okay, I can almost guarantee it. If you're standing here like this, just, just waiting for disaster, any skilled fighter, anyone who knows how to move, they're gonna do, you know, a couple things can happen here. Thing number one, they're gonna see the open target here, you're just sitting waiting here. You, like a punching bag, okay? They're gonna come in, they're gonna knock your head off. Thing number two, if it's you're de dealing with someone who, let's say they're from a BJJ wrestling background, whatever, they see your stationary stance here, it's, open invitation, first one second, it's gonna be, they're gonna pick you up, it's gonna be a takedown. Now it's easy to say, so the reason I'm, I'm telling you this, I can say it with conviction, not because watching videos, okay? I can say it from conviction because I was that person. That's why I share these, I'm gonna share these stories with you. Not just to tell one story after another, me getting beat up. The story is because then, here's the real truth. Often in life, particularly, in martial arts, you learn more from when something doesn't work, when you fail at something, than when you have success at something. So it's great to be able to knock someone across the room. You, okay, you understand power, that, but when you do that, many times you don't. It's not you're learn, not really learning something new from that. When something doesn't work, when something really bad, catastrophic happens, you you remember it, and then you try to say, well, how the hell do I prevent that from happening again? All right. So I'll show, share a little story with you. Um, take you way back to the uh, 1990s. So for some of you, it's probably before you were born. The 1990s, Toronto Moss Park. Uh, at that time, a local community, a shout out Moss Park. I was working in a local community center, um, teaching something called family self-defense. Really fun, I was teaching parents and children in the neighborhood, kind of working together. They showed, both learned self-defense skills, how to defend themselves. Uh, and at that time, I happened to learn that uh, from my boss at the time, he said, oh, did you, he knows I love fighting martial arts. He says, do you know that uh, 
Oleg, okay, who's uh, worth maintenance in the, the building here in Moss Park. He's from Russia. That he was on the Russian Olympic training team, the wrestling team. And I said, wow, for me, anytime I hear, okay, someone's a master, I want to go try to learn their secrets. It's just my nature. So it took a lot of bothering to get Oleg. I finally convinced him. I said, I'm pay him. Even though I didn't have much money, pay him everything I had. I was going to get him to teach me, teach me his, his secrets, okay? So then sometimes someone who's amazing at doing something is not 100% the best teacher, or maybe he was best. You'll have to decide. His idea of the teaching the class was, I would stand there, and then he just attacked me over and over again, without really not, not no explanation whatsoever. So, the interesting thing is, at that time in my life, okay, from what I had studied, what I was working on, my concept was that I can deal. Here I am. And I, here's my old stance, okay? I'm sitting here like this, like a robot. I thought I can deal with any incoming force. When Oleg, okay, when this Olympic, not Olympic team, but not Olympic wrestler, Olympic training team, elite level wrestler, okay, with attack comes, throws his energy into attacking you, you believe it's a mind opening experience. And I'll share what happened to me. So at that time, I said, I'm going to get ready for uh, my sparring, learning, training with Oleg, so to wear athletic, try to wear athletic clothing. So at the time, I was wearing these, uh, I'll never forget them, the Adidas, they were like, the, had the buttons upside their tearaway pants. Well, I was wearing tearaway pants in the 90s, I don't know how to explain it. But anyhow, I was wearing them, okay, and the t-shirt, whatever. So here I am, this is my first encounter, okay? Oleg doesn't say a word, he's crouched, he's crouched away from me in the gym, had the gym to ourselves. There I am waiting my robot pose here. He came at me like a force of nature, okay? Exploding across the, towards me. In my head, this is all very dangerous, what I call fantasy techniques that I developed. I had different ideas. They, you think you, you can stop someone of that nature. You think a jamming kick or gum sour or whatever you think is gonna be enough. I'll tell you something, okay? If you think, if you can, never mind think, if you can stand in one spot like this, you can stop Oleg from getting his mitts on you with just applying some kind of gums out without sprawling or whatever, you deserve a million dollars. It's not, guarantee 1000% it's not happening, all right? He's like a mongoose. There, there's no way you're stand here and, and deal with him that way. What happened to me? That's a good question. What happened to me is I can't remember, can't remember what technique I tried to apply. What I do remember, unforgettable, him pick me up over his head, okay, spin me in one direction, I guess to get momentum, I'm not entirely sure, I never actually learned wrestling from him. So spin me in one direction, throws me. At the same time, I guess he was holding on to my pant leg, he throws me, the tearaway pants, they tear away all right, rip right off throws me, with no pants, 10 feet through the air, crash against the gym floor. I got up at that point. Epic humiliation, okay? Now, I don't normally give myself credit. In this case though, I would tell you a lot of people <laughs> will walk away from this situation and say, okay, that's enough lessons for me, all right? For me, however, I recognize something fundamental, important happening here. I continue to take this not, thank God, no more tearaway pants. This exact same scenario repeated hundreds of times, all right? Now, what I learned from that, I carried with me, and it's this. So many times in Wing Chun, people are gonna tell you that it's always, you have to move forward, always forward, forward only, or, you know, you have to receive the force. Loi la hoi song, the talk, you receive what comes. Not, not necessarily trying to, it depends on the force. Okay, I'll tell you, in, in certain situations, someone trying to do take down, trying to get your leg, it's not receive the force, you get the hell, you need to get the hell out of the way. You need to be mobile, you need to be active, you need to be moving all over the place, okay? Same thing when you're fighting someone, so many the fantasy techniques, I see people talk about, you know, the Wing Chun, you, you're gonna use your Wing Chun versus someone who's doing boxing, but then, just like the wrestler, okay? 
who who's the boxer? Who are you training against? The people I see, they're trying to do the, the takedown defense. Then I see the person trying to do the takedown. It's a fellow Wing Chun student who doesn't. That's not Ole. Okay, they don't know. They don't know how to do the takedown. So of course the technique that you use works. Same thing with a boxer. The boxer, I see someone simulating a boxer, comes up standing like this, throwing one, two punch. Boxer is extremely mobile. They're moving all over the place, okay? I don't know where Wing Chun fighters got it in their head, other than the movies, that you have to stay in place like a robot like that. Mobility, not just important, it's practically in an actual fighting sense, fighting scenario, the most important thing. Most important to be able to move, to, to be able to stay active and change and adapt to the scenario. Scenario is changing all the time. So, nothing wrong. Actually, the Wing Chun footwork has, it's amazing and extremely versatile. Partly because of its simplicity. It's a fun, the fundamentals of it are, are very, very sound, structural, and really easy to learn and work with. So, those are the ones that I want you to come from a, come from a mental position of mo it's all about, okay, it's all about being mobile, being active and mobile. Never standing st stuck like this. Don't stand stuck, no reason to. Only time people, if you're doing chi sao or something, sometimes it's less mobile face to face. Actually, that may be a problem, but it's another story for another time. So for now, we're going to talk about the bu ma, the darting step in Wing Chun. I'm going to show you the basics, kind of how to, how to, how to learn how you can practice at home. The reason I share that story with you is I always want you to understand here's why I'm doing something the way I do it. Then you can say, you know why? You'll encounter a thousand different uh, suggestions, books, videos, whatever. That's up to you to decide whether this one makes sense, that one makes sense. You have to use your judgment okay, based on common sense, based on, on what the person is telling you. They have to have a rationale. Why? Don't just say, this is the way it must be done. Okay? You have to have, understand a rationale for yourself. Then also adapt how it works to you. So. Buma means darting step, okay? That's the step we're learning, it's a basic step in Wing Chun. So you already kind of were, I'm hoping you watched a previous video uh, working on your basic stance, finding your center. The finding center part one. If you haven't done those, go back and learn basic stance first because if you don't have a basic stance, you can't move your basic stance. That's what we're doing here. So fundamentally, Wing Chun, this part is very simple when you have your stance. You already have your basic stance here. Okay? You get comfortable in your stance, you create, you're creating that triangle, that energy. Now, from this position, all the darting step means, all right, is that whatever direction you're going in, that's the foot that's going to move first. The other foot's going to catch up after it's called darting step, come, step darts forward. So let's say, for example, from my perspective, uh, I have my right leg lead here, that I want to move uh, 45 degree angles forward towards the right. In that case, my right leg is going to be the one moves forward, and then my other foot comes behind it. I move back into my stance here. All right. So what that means is, so here I'll back up a little bit so you can see my feet. I'm here. I'm moving here. I step forward here. I step back here. So this foot here, I want to go this direction. This step here moves forward. Step this this foot catches up, darts forward afterwards. That's because we don't want to have a lot of time where. You're here, and there's a. If I'm bouncing too much here, there's all kinds of areas here where I'm unstable, where I don't have my footing. All right? So, Wing Chun focuses on a short step. It's not, don't try to take cover too much distance per step. If I want to cover more distance, then I'll take more than, I'll take more than one step. I, I'm always trying to, there's a stability there. So, the other thing is here, I'm so lucky that I'm practicing on a, a flat. My floor is made of wood here. All right? Next time you go outside, I want you to look around. Doesn't matter where you are. Look around, pay attention to the, the ground where you are. You're gonna see the sidewalks going up and down, there's curbs. Actually, there's very little to challenge you to find actual true flat even space. It doesn't really exist outside, all right? So footwork that you may use that, that can kind of work, we can count on being able to slide, not have to look down. That type of footwork where you bounce all over the place like this, it's cool, but it's not actually outside that's going to be very dangerous. Why? Because you're going to bounce back here, you're going to trip over something. So, Wing Chun is designed for the real world. This is designed to be practiced outside in real environments. That's why, okay, from your stance here, you're going to be able to take, you're taking smaller steps because it's much safer. 
That way you, you, you're not going to be tripping all over the place. You're trying to keep your, yourself even there. That's the, the concept there. So, however, even though, okay, my steps here are small, I can change direction. I can get out of the way when I need to. So get out of the way part is very, very important. Sometimes the nature of the force, also depending, you're talking about multiple opponents, that's another story as well. We'll talk about that. But in a case of an old leg rushing at you, okay, my number one, old leg is rushing at me. Believe me, the second he gets a hand on my leg, I'm done for, okay? Then you say, oh, Wing Chun's a close fighting game. It's also a close fighting game for him. He's a wrestler, all right? So you have to choose how, how you want to approach that game. So now that he's rushing in, number one thing, oh, I gotta get the hell out of the way of that incoming force. Once he, he has his weakness too, just like everyone, all right? As soon as he commits to that and he overcommits, he comes to try to do a takedown on me, once he's made his, there's a moment there, then you can apply a technique. You find your stance, you apply a technique. You have to get out of the way first, okay? So, going back to how to get out of the way, here you are in your stance here, you already have your basic stance here, okay? What I want you to practice doing, very, very simple. You practice, go one direction. So in this case, now I'm going this direction, all right? My left leg is in front. Left leg, come forward first, other foot backs up. Forward. You can do double, so back, back, okay? I'm pushing off with the lead, push myself back. If I want to go forward, I'm pushing off by push off here. Push off the front to go back, push off the back to go front. When you do it, you see it's not really any other way to do it. It's very natural, okay? The only caveat that I'll put in here is, I'll confess, when I first learned how I was taught to do it, it's the, the lineage, was that when I was to move forward, here, I'll go back to the traditional stance for you, okay? When I was to move forward is to put my heel down, can't see, put my heel down and then catch out my stance. Now, why do I not do it that way? Okay, again, experience. The problem with this put your heel down idea that many Wing Chun practitioners do is twofold. The first one, first of all, don't do this, but if you were trying to jump up and land on your heels, I think you know in your head, even if you do very lightly, you see it's terrible to put that much pressure on your heel, it doesn't make sense, all right? So you shouldn't actually end up putting your heel forward, it's not a natural motion. Second, more important to me, if I put my heel down like this, that makes a straight leg target that's now weighted to the ground. If I was a Wing Chun practitioner and I see someone keeps putting their leg like that, my instinct is going to be to apply force outside of the leg and break it from the outside. Okay, because so the knee's not going to want to bend that way. You're presenting a, really a pretty clear target for people, even if for a short time you do that. Also, even here, uncomfortable on your heel. Natural human movement, the way our foot is designed, is to go that the, the ball of your foot, the pad on your foot, comes first. So that's when you put your energy forward. So here I am, when I move forward, the ball of my foot should touch the ground first. Then it comes over, or if I need to, I can change my mind. I can push off from the ball of my foot. Your heel, you cannot push off from. You can't change your mind. So it's very static that way, all right? This next part, I know right away, many Wing Chun practitioners are not gonna like it. They're gonna say, oh, that's not how I was, okay. However, if you make it work, it's fantastic. I'm just telling my way, okay? So when now when I'm moving here, before, let's say my opponent is where you are, you're far away here, okay? So when I'm co coming in here, my weight actually here, my weight here is on the balls of my feet. Balls of my feet because you'll discover this for yourself. Just try it and see. You, you, you'll see the difference, all right? When I'm trying to be mobile, I might need to have the weight on the balls of my feet. So any sport, any kind of movement, you're gonna see the same thing. That's how you, you stay light on your feet, stay mobile, okay? Fair question you say to me, I thought you're supposed to have the weight evenly distributed through the length of your foot, as I described in my stance. That's correct. That's why, not contradictory, that's why I'm talking about move your stance here. So from here, okay, we're at this here. When I'm coming in, okay, I won't use human, I'll just use the view mount. So we're making steps here. I change my direction. I come in here. So at this point, now when I engage and I meet my opponent's arm bridge, here, 
I'm going to connect while I have contact my feet to the ground so that I can apply my stance. But I'm not going to make myself immobile and say stuck so I have to stay stuck, stuck, stuck all the time. It doesn't make sense, okay? Why am I trying to make myself immobile and stay stuck to the ground? My opponent is over here. I either have to do two things. Depending on his, act, his or her actions, I have to get out of the way, okay? In which case, I need to be mobile. Or I need to bridge the gap and get in there. In which case, I need to be extremely mobile. They are going to run away. They're not going to stand there waiting for me, okay? So, the mobility comes into, for your practice, is just basic learning to move in those different directions. You get comfortable from your stance. You work on finding your center. You work on your basic stance here. When you have your comfortable, your basic stance, then you practice, okay? I want to go forward this direction. I'm pushing off my book. I back foot step forward my front foot. Ball of my feet. I engage here. And then you can move back, okay? Trust me, sometimes you need to move back. So I'm pushing forward. Then if you want to, okay, now I'm going to get more comfortable. I push forward. I'm going to push forward twice. I'm going to go back twice. Forward twice. Okay, backward twice. Again, keep those steps short. Now, if I want to change direction, I, now I need to go backwards in this direction. In that case, what I don't want to do, try to cross my feet, okay? Wing Chun, you don't, don't cross your feet. So I'm not trying, never mind Wing Chun, it's really actually not the best idea of fighting scenario. Cross my feet here, if anyone else is going to attack you there, okay? So from here, if I need to step back, my back foot steps back. So again, I want to go this direction. I'm using this side. I'm going to move back in that direction. Switch my stance, okay? Switch your stance you have to get super comfortable with. No real lead stance and we're always switching our stance, always switching lead leg is whatever the, whatever direction, whatever scenario determines. Don't get stuck, you can only fight with one leg in front. Again, it makes no sense, okay? So now I move forward here, move backward here. That's all you need to get comfortable doing. So when I'm here, I'm moving, here I'm moving. Then if you wanna choose a target for yourself, it doesn't have to be a wooden dummy, it can be a pole in your house, it can be whatever can be something you put on the floor. Then when you get to that target, then you can practice, then you sink into your stance, all right? When you reach your target, you sink to your stance. I'm hoping that's clear, all right? You stay active, you stay mobile. When you reach your target, you sink into your stance when you make connection. When you make connection, when you sink into your stance, that's what I want you to try to apply, coil energy, okay? So from here, I'm mobile, I stay active. I come here, I I make contact with my opponent, I sink. Now it's coil energy. This, this energy is what we're talking about going to your basic stance again. I'm sink here, coil energy, so I can explode and use that energy. This energy. All right? So small steps. You just keep focusing on that. First doesn't have to be fast. You can do very slowly, okay? Slowly. But don't stay slowly. I want you to have to learn to, to, to do this with some energy. You have practiced it. Then, when we do another section on on movement, then I'll talk about the shima, the circle step. There's other ways to move as well, I have other applications. But for now we're gonna keep it simple. Keep it simple, always the best idea anyway. All right? Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, until next time, stay strong, keep practicing. We'll come back, we'll learn some new exciting things.